Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhir Bagga and today I'll be taking you through one of the interesting games that Vishy Anand played against Joel Lottier in 1997. Now this week we are celebrating Vishy Anand's birthday on 11 December. So I just thought of making some quick videos on his greatest matches of all time. And this one is the second one. Earlier we had covered against Gary Kasparov. So if you want to see that one, I'll paste the link in the description below as well for you. And I've also created a special playlist for this. So I'll be just adding more videos to it uh, going forward. So I hope you do check that out and like it. So do let me know your feedback on that. Now, before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, without wasting any further time, let's begin with the game. Anand was playing as white, started off with King's Pawn opening, playing e4 and Open plays d5. Now, Lottier is a French grandmaster uh, and he he likes to play the Scandinavian and that's what happens. And here, uh, Anand takes the pawn and uh, Lottier gets his queen out pretty early in the game. Now, the disadvantage of getting the queen early is that it can be chased down by getting a knight out and that's what happens. Uh, so, you're basically giving a lot of advantage to white initially in the game. Now, uh, Anand plays knight c3 and Lottier plays queen to uh, a5. Now, generally the best move as for the computer is to go back on d8. But here, since uh, the queen is on a5, your basic plans would involve playing a pawn to d3 at some point of time and even then play bishop on d2 so that you can have some discoveries uh, attacking the queen later on. But here... Uh, Anand played d4 instead of playing d3. The best move although was to play the knight and develop another minor piece. But um, Anand goes with uh, d4 trying to take control of the center. And here uh, Lottier starts developing his knight as well on of the king side by playing f6. Preparing to maybe just play pawn forward, develop the bishop and castle quickly on the king side. Uh, here Anand also develops the knight on f3. And Lottie responds with c6. Now, this was a confusing mood. If you are just trying to maybe develop and castle, then you should be playing pawns forward here. Uh, maybe, I don't know what he was looking forward to. Maybe he was preventing the bishop coming there and giving a check because if he doesn't play the pawn here and say some other random move, uh, which can be bishop, the best move as well. And a check can come in, but that's not a problem because yes, after the pawn moves uh, ahead, you are just going to retrieve the uh, bishop backwards. So there's no threats of that. So it's a passive move which you can play later on as well if your opponent tries to attack. So c6 wasn't required there, but Lottier chose it over there. And then uh, bishop to c4 by Anand, trying to develop the bishop in the right diagonal so that he can make use of this beautiful diagonal, can come back as well once uh, Anand develops the bishop. He can even uh, develop his queen on e and probably try and cast on the queen side as well because yes, the pawn is guarded. The bishop can also guard the pawn. So it can be a queen side castle as well. And then you can just storm away with the pawns on the king side uh, so that the opponent king is under a lot of pressure throughout. So here, uh, Lottier identifies a threat maybe and just tries to develop the bishop. Maybe trying to now castle on the queen side uh, can also be a trick. Also, he's just developing the bishop making uh, Anand a bit confused that what side he's actually developing and going to castle. Here Anand goes with knight e5, the best move as well, just trying to gain some more momentum, attacking the pawn as well. Knight is very active on e5. Even in the London system, e5 is a very good square which the knight controls. And here if you see, suddenly Anand is pressurizing more on f7 with one move. So the obvious move which had to come here was e6 trying to block this bishop's diagonal. And here Anand plays g4. Now g4 is a simple and clear move which tells you I'm attacking your bishop. You have to go back and there's no way that I will castle on the king side. If at all I have to castle in this game, it will be queen side. So the opponent can even try and counter attack here. Uh, but here, first of all, uh, opponent de decides to go back to g6 with the bishop, saving the bishop, which allows Anand to play even h4. Now, as you see, there's hardly any development on the opponent's side. 
But Anand has, is continuously push, pushing his pawns as well. The knights are centralized. Bishop is active. Uh, so pretty much attack going on from Anand straight away. Now here, opponent uh, just tries to develop the knight. Uh, because, of course, even if you push the pawn forward, bishop can escape because uh, e4 is controlled by the knight, but you cannot really take because of the pin. Also, the knight is guiding it. So it's a good square. So bishop has a retrieval, so nothing to be bothered about. So here, Anand first takes on the knight, hoping that uh, if he takes with the king, uh, Lottier takes with the king, then his castling rights get spoiled. If he takes with the knight, Knight goes back and it's not very, uh, it's not going to be leading to any active squares because most of them are actually covered with pawn uh, standing on d4. So here, uh, actually, uh, finally, uh, Lottier takes with the knight and Anand pushes the pawn forward on h5 as well, uh, making sure that the bishop has only one space to go, which was e4. Now here, open, the arm naturally castle, but tries to do a rook lift. Now this rook maneuvering is always nice by Anand. Uh, last game also, which we saw against Gary Kasparov, he was he the rook lift was a game changer. He gave away his rook for a bishop pair to remain active, and then he won it from there. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll just post the link in the description below so that you can do check it out. Now here, uh, of course, Anand can get his rook active on e3 as well trying to just stand in front of the king because the king hasn't castled at all uh here uh now lottie identifies the threat maybe and just tries to attack the rook and now rook still goes to the center file just making sure that king can be put under some pressure later on by even playing pawn forward if required at all here, uh, now Lottier gets his knight on b6 eventually because that was probably the couple, he had a couple of options by going backwards, but it wasn't doing anything there. But here, at least the knight is attacking the bishop. So, bishop can be defended by going backwards on b3 as well, just making sure that uh, a2 is always defended. That's what computer choice was. But Anand chose to get his uh, bishop on d3 rather. Now, Anand's idea was simple. He wanted to make sure that just in case the opponent castles on the king's side, uh, his bishop is always eyeing in the right diagonal because uh, standing on b3 will not yield him much because of this pawn chain now. Here, Lottier plays uh, knight to d5, uh, asking some troubles uh, for the rook. Now, of course, there's a couple of attackers over here and only one defender. So, Anand will lose a pawn as well if he doesn't defend the situation right away uh, but instead he lets his rook go as always and tries to hold on to the bishop pair now uh, he plays pawn forward which actually traps the bishop bishop cannot take bishop can go here to save itself but uh, the rook is weak it's hanging now knight can take it uh, but here actually bishop came on b4 which is a bad move even i didn't understand this why Lottier played bishop on b4 because he can simply take on the knight and get some advantage. If he would have not done this and takes, what is the follow-up? Anand takes with the bishop. Yes, he has a bishop pair, but you at least got a good exchange. Yes, your bishop is kind of trapped and you will at max take a pawn uh, before you just uh, sack it. Uh, but there is not much hope as well otherwise. Uh, but the move that Lottier chose there was bishop on b4. Uh, yes, which pressurizes the knight further, but isn't of much help because Anand can just sidestep uh, the king as well on f2, and that's what happens. Uh, and finally, Lottie takes on the knight with the bishop, and then he takes back with the queen attacking the rook. Now, rook has to be saved, so Anand plays rook b1. And as you see, this game is already, uh, as from the beginning, a bit in favor of Anand. And here, yes, he can take another pawn. So Lottier does take the pawn on uh, d4 as well. Now, it's interesting that bishop is on white uh, diagonal and the queen is not guarded. So some point of time, Anand will like to make sure that he can take advantage by giving a check maybe to the king somehow with the bishop so that his queen, uh, he can take Lottier's queen out of the game. Also, to be noticed, uh, there's a couple of attackers here uh, right now. And uh, 
yes, the king is the main defense here. If I try to be greedy and take the bishop, then a rook is going to be hanging uh, with the knight. So things can go wrong. And here, Anand again finds the right move, taking on the pawn with the rook uh, on b7. Then Lotier tries to centralize the rook, uh, which again was a very confusing move. You can actually castle, but he doesn't at all. Uh, and Anand plays uh, h6 now, forcing him to take on something. Either he takes the rook or he takes the pawn. And if he does take the pawn, you are not going to castle here as well because the king will be open. And if you take the rook, still uh, we can exchange. Uh, your bishop pair will be very strong standing in the center. And then, of course, this bishop is a weakness because it's trapped. So that's how Anand can take advantage. In fact, that's what happens in the game as well. Uh, after he pushes the pawn forward, uh, Lotter decides to take on the pawn. And here, uh, finally, Anand plays bishop on g6. Now, it's a clever move, you can say, because the queen is being attacked. And if you try to take the queen, uh, there are a lot of attacks. See, it's mate in four already if you just try to take the pawn because of this is uh, a pin. And if knight comes in between, which will happen eventually, takes and just a couple of moves remaining. The bishop takes this and it's now mate in one with the bishop. So that can be a quick checkmate. Of course, Lotier would have calculated that. Uh, so he tried to defend it by placing his uh, knight there. That was a tricky and nice move as well. Yes, queens can be exchanged off the board here. But then eventually what happens is rook goes down and the other rook will be hanging as well. So it doesn't look good for Lottie already. So Anand takes the queen, which uh, Lottie takes back with the rook, of course. And here Anand played a rook to um, d3 instead of giving a check. I was wondering why is that the case? Because if we go down, okay, he can come back first of all. And could still take here maybe. And after takes... Uh, Anand is in a lot of advantage because this bishop is actually trapped. Anand will still be left with bishop here and a rook. Open, meanwhile, uh, can only survive with rook and the knight. So that is one way of simplifying stuff. But Anand chooses to exchange the, exchange the rook as well, which is always nice too. Now here, uh, Lotte goes back with the rook. Anand takes uh, and then takes on, and then gets his bishop backwards, not taking a free pawn there, which he could have actually. And here, Lotier resigns, understanding that there's nothing much remaining in the game. This It's a 4.5 uh, evaluation already by the engine. Uh, bishop pair is there, and um, Lotier's bishop cannot be saved because of the pawn chain and the king standing very close by. Also, Rook is pretty active, can give a check, can trap his uh, knight as well by playing bishop eventually on a6, so that Rook and the bishop both are attacking the knight. So there's nothing much remaining in this game, and Lotia resigns. So this was one of the aggressive games that I saw of Hanan of late. I think uh, Agad Matter also covered this video, uh, this chess game, in one of his uh, videos recently. I saw that maybe, and then I came across this uh, while checking out the top games by Vishy Anand. And yeah, this was one of my favorites as well, because that kind of an attack, which you saw uh, by just pushing and storming the pawns ahead, uh, on the king side, not not castling your king to safety, but playing more aggressive chess is something which Anand really uh, played amazingly in this game. I hope you like the video. Uh, so do let me know feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And see you tomorrow with some interesting chess match by Vishy Anand again. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye bye.